Hello, my name is William Richards. Welcome to the Hall Institute of Public Policy's Hall Public Forum. Uh, we're doing a series with uh, local government leaders called Hometown Solutions, in which we examine ways that municipalities and counties are trying to make their communities better uh, through their own their own uh, efforts. And with me today is Councilman Joe Arace from Oceanport Borough. Hi, nice to see you. Good to meet you. Uh, so. I wanted to bring you here today to talk about your efforts for uh, economic uh, revitalization for Oceanport. And you've used your position in kind of an unusual way <laughs> uh, in that, well, one of the crown jewels of, of, of Oceanport is Monmouth Park Racetrack. Correct. But you've been lobbying for, for Monmouth Park in sort of a roundabout way. Correct. In that you've been mo lobbying for... VLTs and slots at the Meadowlands. Correct. Which, according to my maps, is not in Ocean. <laughs> also correct. So, tell tell me a little bit about that, and, and sure. Why, how does that how does that lobbying favor the people of Ocean? Sure. That that's um it's it's interesting point because VLTs and slot machines are only now in New Jersey and Atlantic City. That's the only place in New Jersey they're they're legal in the casinos in Atlantic City. <clears throat> the um, administration and, and the Senate leadership has said that they want to keep VLTs and slot machines only in Atlantic City. Um, we take the opinion that uh, since gaming has moved in other states, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, and now even New York in Yonkers Raceway, um, and they're talking about Aqueduct, um, that we need to move our gaming industry into a, a, the 21st century also and not just have slot machines in Atlantic City. Um, the reason why we originally advocated four or five years ago when, when this all took place, when, when I got elected about six years ago, um, we advocated for VLTs at the Meadowlands since it was a stone's throw from Midtown Manhattan. It's a, it's a five minute train ride from um, Manhattan to New Jersey. So we figured that's the best place to bring people in. It's in a city location over there. Um, they already have what was um, the, the new Meadowlands Stadium. They have um, the racetrack there, the Meadowlands. They have <clears throat> whatever you call the new version of Xanadu, the American Dream Project. Oh, yeah, the, the, the or, constant, uh, right, exactly. Thing, yeah. So we thought that would be a way to get people in, and what you would do is be able to save horse racing, which is the goal of the whole thing, um, by just taking a small percentage of the money. At one time there was a study done saying about a billion dollars could be raised if they just put VLTs in the Meadowlands. This wow. is going back six years ago. Those numbers have probably shifted a little bit, but so is the market, you know, with everybody else opening. But horse racing, we don't need a small percentage of that to compete with the surrounding areas. When you have the surrounding states all having some kind of gaming at their racetracks, they can offer more attractive purses. So therefore, the industry in New Jersey is now taking a back seat, where it was a leadership horse racing position, is taking a back seat to New York and Maryland and Delaware because of their purse structures. So the way to try to, to counteract that was, would be to put a casino. Um, and I think now VLTs have passed. I think you really need a full-fledged casino there. And not to cut out Atlantic City, but to share with Atlantic City because Meadowlands and, and is not going to be able to run a casino. You partner with somebody in Atlantic City, uh, a casino there, and, and, um, and, and open something there where you can attract people from Manhattan. We kind of left Oceanport out of it for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, parochial, obviously. Mm -hmm. At the time, when you looked at the, the package, you know, we're so close to Atlantic City. We're about an hour, 25-minute drive to Atlantic City. So we figured, okay, let's, let's, put, let's put everything up north where it's far enough away where people don't have to make a three-hour drive. But an hour and a half, we'll leave it. Um, and, you know, we are a small town community. We have 5,800 residents. It's in, Monmouth Park is located smack dab in a community. There's, there's houses right around it. You know, did at that point, you know, we, we thought maybe it's not the correct thing for the borough of Oceanport. And again, six years ago, that was the picture. Nowadays, when you take a look at the revenue streams and the pictures and what you can do with the slot machines and casinos, it, it, I think if it ever came up to a vote in town, I think um, with the, the handling it the right way and having people come in and out on major highways, um, I, think, I think you'd see favoritism for it in, in Oceanport too. But I think we wanted to keep it far enough away from Atlantic City so they wouldn't protest. So that's why the original um, position was, was the Meadowlands. So is it, is it more <coughs> uh, to set up the Meadowlands as, as a model? Well, I guess at the time the thinking was, was just the Meadowlands. Correct. But now as you're thinking sort of let's, let's try this as a model mm -hmm. and if it works here, can, we can expand this to tracks elsewhere in the state? I think so. I think, um, I mean, you have Freehold, you have uh, Meadowlands and Monmouth Park, so you really have the three major tracks in New Jersey. I think um, there's still a couple of tracks in Atlantic City still runs uh, a couple of races too, the racetrack down there. But if you look at the model, the other states have followed. I mean, you look at Yonkers Raceway, which is almost dead and buried at one point. 
Um, and it now has a, a recovery with people waiting to get in, uh, mainly for the casino. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's detractions there, too. Do you want people to come in and, and, and bet at a casino and not, you know, play the horses? I mean, the, the, the game plan is to use the revenue to enhance the purses and get people back interested in horse racing. I think you can't lose sight of the fact that slot machines is the answer and now horse racing safe. No, you still need to build up, you know, the, the business of horse racing which I think is what the new owners and the new, the new management at, at Monmouth Park is trying to do. Sure, sure. Now, earlier this year, it looked like uh, Monmouth Park was going to go into private hands for the, uh, the owner of uh, Resorts Casino, Correct. Uh, Morris Bailey. Mm -hmm. And then, then suddenly that fell through. Correct. Uh, that deal fell through, and it was the Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, mm -hmm. NJHTHA, that stepped in. Correct. Now you've you've said uh, elsewhere in, in media that that uh, their plans mesh well with Oceanport's plans Correct. for for uh, in terms of economic development for right. the 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 track itself and, mm -hmm. and the surrounding community. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. How how do, how do they mesh well? Sure. Um, as I said before, Oceanport is a regular is really a residential community. We have uh, no major rateables to say other than Monmouth Park. Monmouth Park pays us about twenty three percent of our taxes each year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great. Um, we have a little small uh, restaurant, we have a bank, and that's really our downtown area. So there really isn't much of a downtown area in Oceanport. Um, going on concurrently with this is Fort Monmouth closing. And Oceanport has uh, about 1,800 acres in Fort Monmouth that is coming offline too, um, which was once a military base. So that's being um, economically redeveloped. Unfortunately, Oceanport doesn't have control over that economic redevelopment. It's being handled by the state. So we have fears, different fears of what can go on there. Um, as we started to sit down with, and we did sit down with Mr. Bailey when he was um, going to be the leaseholder, and, and he sat down with us and said, here's what I perceive for Monmouth Park. Instead of it being used for three months out of the year for horse racing, we think we need to make it a, a resort destination. Okay. <clears throat> and he talked about it that time, um, and a lot of what he talked about that time have been followed through by the Thoroughbred Horsemen, which is great. Um, Dennis Drazen, who's running Monmouth Park now on behalf of the Thoroughbred Horsemen, um, has the same kind of vision, and we've sat down with them. And um, things like, uh, for the short term, they're going to put in a 36-hole miniature golf course to attract people there. It'll be a state-of-the-art uh, miniature golf course, which the area doesn't have. They're talking about um, a concert venue hmm. to have uh, A-name concerts, um, talking about changing, um, putting in a hotel an indoor, um, with an indoor water park. Oh, wow. Not an outdoor water park, but a beautiful indoor, like a resort destination. Hmm. So these class. are all, yes, exactly. These are all plans that um, Morris Bally and, and, and Dennis Drazen have, have come to us with again and said, hey, we're looking at, at this. What do you guys think? Hmm. And now you're looking at Oceanport, where we don't have many rateables, where our rateable is Monmouth Park. You know, how does it fit in? Monmouth Park still owns a lot of land there. The parking lot is huge at Monmouth Park. Not all the spaces are used as they used to be you know, 25 and 30 years ago. So it fits in nice with the borough being able to pick up some additional um, places for people to come to. Hmm. Um, if you have an, a year-round resort hotel um, connected to the racetrack, if you put in an amphitheater for concerts, if you put in, uh, and they're talking about some kind of an indoor movie theater, any of that stuff makes Monmouth Park more attractive for people to come to. If people come in Oceanport, you know, it can help us you know, rateable-wise and, and, uh, and in addition to bringing people in which is what you want to do to help Monmouth Park. So I think, I think they've done a great job with their vision. Now it's a matter of <laughs> how long does it take and you know, where, where's the money come from. Sure. Uh, I'd like to play a clip uh, for, uh, of you uh, quoted <laughs> in the, the Monmouth patch. The 2012 current agreement, as we understand it from reading about it in the newspapers, calls for 141 racing days and an average purse of 150000 per day. To put that number in perspective, we were racing up $1 million a day in 2010 and $400,000 a day in 2011. The projected daily purse of 150,000 is the lowest for any major track in the United States. In fact, at $150,000 a day in purse money, Monmouth Park, the most beautiful and historic racetrack this side of Saratoga, can no longer be considered a major racetrack. 2012 also calls for no stakes races and mo more notably, no Haskell. Correct. Now, Lots changed since you gave that quote. Lots changed since then. Uh, the Haskell is back. Thank God. Uh, it's scheduled for July 29th, and I, I hear seats are selling out. They're, they just got a, a message yesterday from the racetrack saying there's, they're well ahead of schedule for seats, so um, it's going to be crowded, which is good. Outstanding, and and that's that's one of the, the, the major races in thoroughbred mm -hmm. horse racing. Yes. Um, you know, sort of a uh, crown jewel of the crown jewel of, of ocean. For our area, definitely. Um, and the purses are back up in the $400,000 range. Correct. 
Um, what happened? Uh, well, what happened is cooler heads prevailed on both parts of the state and um, the people that are going to come in and run the racetrack. At that point, um, there was negotiations going on between the state and uh, members of the Thoroughbred Horsemen Association, and uh, everybody came to the table. The state was uh, had drawn their line in the sand. They had told Mr. Bailey enough's enough. They walked away from Mr. Bailey, and we were dangerously close at one point to having no racing at Monmouth Park at all. So the, the Thoroughbred Horsemen stepped in and said, hey, look, you know, you, we can't run it. They knew we couldn't run 141 days. The state knew we can't run 141 days. So let's cut it down to 70 days, which is what they're going to be doing this year. Okay. So now you cut the amount of racing days in half, you can add to the purse, plus um, the horsemen have, uh, have graciously agreed to put some money into the pot for, to turn the purses back to 400000 Now, the Haskell money, I'm, I'm not really sure where that's come from, but it's come, which is good. <laughs> uh, I believe they got a sponsorship and, and all that. But it, at one point, you were looking at 141 racing days, and this is going to be it, and we're racing, we have a contract, and we're going to do it. And thank God, cooler heads prevailed on both the state side and the... Um, and the horseman side, and everybody was able to come together and run an event. Um, the state had said, and, and, and when the state says something in, in the new regime, they mean what they say. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a negotiating ploy. It's no longer, we may not do this. They, they say we're not going to run. They're not going to run. So I think that's what people realize. It's like, okay, what kind of agreement can we all come to? Mm -hmm. And enter um, Dennis Drazen and, and his team, and they were able to come in and come to an agreement and moderate both sides and be able to do did, did the shift to yeah. uh from from uh, an individual who comes from the casino industry to a, a group of people that that were horsemen did that ha play a big part in in the uh the shift you think well it, it's a lot and you know it, when you talk to different people you hear 20 different stories i mean there's a lot of moving parts you have people from the casino side, people from the racing side that still needed to be involved in the decision-making process because sure. they held the licenses and they held the days they can run. So you needed to get three people at the table. You needed, at that point, they were negotiating with Jeff Garral for the Meadowlands. Mm -hmm. So all these different pieces were coming together at one point. And, you know, at the last minute when, you know, I think the governor was quoted saying, Mr. Bailey negotiates right until the end. Everything's in negotiation with, with Mr. Bailey. And they negotiated. They negotiated as hard as they could. And then at the end, finally, everybody said, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. and Mr. Bailey walked away and enter the, the horsemen and they were able to get everything spun back to where we can we came up not only with a, a racing season this year but a, a good racing season and uh like you mentioned the haskell i see they're uh they talk about Bodie meister and, and a recap rematch of the belmont so we're hoping hmm. that's what comes so and, and, and you the people will come once the racing is improved and i think everybody realizes that because you go back you mentioned the million dollars from two years ago mm -hmm. And that was the year they did the million dollars. It was all over. We had the attendance was up tremendously. People were there, and then it went from a million dollars back to four hundred, and then it kind of dwindled again. So then you were talking about going from four hundred to one fifty. You know where are we really? Sure. So they were able to at least get it back up to four hundred, which is where we are now. With the whole fight over getting uh, slots and VLTs mm -hmm. and, and, and the more the Racino model. Is that pitting North Jersey against South Jersey uh, w once again and, and sort of South Jersey circling the wagons and saying we have to protect Atlantic City and the rest of the state saying your model's outdated, let us have a shot? Yeah, I think there is a lot of that. It's, it's, if you look at the people who lined up on what side, it's not Democrat, Republican, it's, it's North, South. And, that's, and I think that's unfortunate because everybody should be taking a big picture of what the state can do and what they and what we can do as a state rather than as a what's north jersey getting what's south jersey getting um but uh, yeah there was definitely a, a definitely a north south line drawn in the sand and um and we're still not out of that i mean the senate president has stated that he will not let the um the the vlts or slots come to a vote in the senate floor um and the governor has been saying the same thing he's not going to push for any kind of change they're going to give atlantic city three years to have a shot with the new campaign um I forgot what it's called, the Go, Go AC or something, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get people to come to Atlantic City, and, and they, put the, they put some money into the new Revel. The state has a vested interest I mean, with tax credits that they had given back to Atlantic City. Um, and, and we'll see. I mean, I, I'm, I've been quoted, and you probably will find a clip, where, <laughs> where um, the Atlantic City model's dead. I mean, that model of just that's the only casino in the Northeast is never going to come back. Sure, sure. I, I, mean, I live in so, Ewing, mm -hmm. and uh, so, so I'm right on the river. Uh, I can I can be in Pennsylvania faster than I can be in a lot of Jersey. Yeah. And the closest casino to me is not Atlantic City. It's right. it's uh, uh, in Ben Salem. I can't remember. Sands, parks, the sand, parks, parks, the Parks uh, Racetrack Casino. And um, 
and and then there's there's, there's Chester, mm-hmm. uh, which is you know if I want to go to a bigger track, right? Um, the, the, you know, R- Racino model. Mm-hmm. Um, Atlantic City is two hours from me. Those those are both within uh, one's twenty minutes, right. the other's half hour, thirty five minutes. Right. So and, and and if you look at the, the the population centers of Jersey, that's true for a lot of people. Correct. Now. Um, so I guess my question for you is, I see casino executives approaching. Uh, the Meadowlands and and, and 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 Oceanport, and and willing to work with these tracks. Correct. Uh, I don't know if it's all of them. I don't know if there's if there's a, a divide, divided camps within Atlantic City, but at least some of these casino companies are willing to work with the tracks. Uh, so if if they're not, if the companies in Atlantic City are not the entrenched interests that Atlantic City that that, that Southern uh, legislators are protecting, mm-hmm. then who are they protecting? That's- that's an interesting question, and it's a great point. Um, again, it, they're protecting Atlantic City, and, and it's the old-school thought that Atlantic City is going to make all this money and be the be-all and end-all. That, that model's passed. It's come and gone. And, you know, unfortunately, New Jersey didn't take advantage of it for the 25 years we had a gambling monopoly, and it, it, it's what it is. I mean, it never, it never helped the surrounding area in Atlantic City. Um, you know, it's it's strictly the boardwalk and the casinos, and then you walk one block in, and it's still Atlantic City, which they haven't addressed. And um, and I don't know, you know, how many more ways they have to see it, or have it said, or have it pointed out. Maybe this will be the last draw. They'll see that this new model of, of trying to attract people with the the, um, the Jersey Shore and have people come to the beach and gamble. I don't think it's going to work. I think it's it's the same tired models that the state has tried in the past that haven't worked. But they're will- they want to give it three years, so. Um, you know, we're going to give it three years. The unfortunate issue, the casinos that are fighting against moving a racetrack, a, a casino up north, are the same people that are opening casinos in Pennsylvania 20 minutes away from Atlantic City. So they're really cannibalizing their own customers as it is. Sure. Um, we set up a task force in, in Oceanport, a Monmouth Park task force. And we had one of our members who actually went to um, the Sands Casino in Bethlehem and counted cars in the parking lot. Oh, at, the counting on the tags? Yeah, and I think at that one day he was there, two-thirds of the cars were from New Jersey. Hmm. So, I mean, your, your point is well taken, and it would be interesting to see um, if they stand true to giving it three years of, of, of uh, time. Hmm. The one thing that's popped up recently, and I don't know if you have it in your list of questions, is sports wagering, which okay. has popped in um, the governor, um, I think just a couple of weeks ago, has stated that um, they're going to start allowing New Jersey to take uh, wagering on sports events, and they want to do it this year. Okay. And they want to start in September. What's the plan look like for do, for implementing that? Well, that's the interesting point. The plan is um, we're going to do it, and it's it's technically against the federal law right now. Federal law has four states that are allowed to do it. It was a sunshine law back 30 years ago. New Jersey did not participate. Obviously, Las Vegas did. Um, and now New Jersey is going to try to go in and say to the federal government, okay, you let them do it, you let Oregon do it, you let a couple other states do it, now we want to do it. Sure, why are we being excluded? Right. Sure. So it's instead of, of trying to sue um, this, this, the federal government to get this waiver, they're just going to do it and see what the federal government, New Jersey, is just going to implement it and the, see what happens. The, the, the California medical marijuana uh, <laughs> Strategy. I kind of call it the Governor Christie strategy, which I, which I kind of <laughs> like. I kind of like when he uh, he means what he says. So he's going to do it, and he's going to come in, and, and uh, hopefully Monmouth Park, and we know Monmouth Park is one of the people that are, are going to be ready to take advantage of that, and hopefully um, start taking betting on football in September. Oh, so wow. we'll see. That's mm-hmm. that's. But that model could almost um, supersede the model of, of slots and, and uh, VLTs, because now you'll have people, the amount of money that's wagered, illegally in the country. That would be unique, is, too. Is, unique is, draw. Exactly. Okay. So you may get younger people who you can then, if they're going to stay here and watch a football game, maybe we'll, we'll watch a race or two. Finally, tell me a little bit, you, you alluded to this a little bit, but tell me about the challenges of dealing with uh, Monmouth Park and your other your other big economic development challenge, uh, Fort Monmouth. Right. Both of which exist within your borough, but you don't have a ton of control over. You can only sort of Correct. Influence the strings, not pull them directly. Correct. And it, it, it's definitely a dichotomy between the two. Right now, um, the relationship we share with Monmouth Park is, is, is great. Monmouth Park has always been willing to work with us. <clears throat> They've always sat down with us, even when the state was in control. Prior to the state being in control, when it was under private ownership, 
the land where our borough hall is and where our fire department is was donated by the Monmouth Park Jockey Club. So we've always had a unique relationship with Monmouth Park. Um, and they were always willing to sit down and say, here, here's what we're looking at. You know, we're looking at doing uh, an indoor water park. You know, when they first said water park, we all said, no, we don't want a water park. You know, we're thinking outdoor use. No, no, think Great Wolf model. Think something like that where it's indoors, where you have families coming. Hmm. And it's a nice model. You know, we're talking about they want to put restaurants in there, new restaurants, because there's really not a nice restaurant at Monmouth Park. They have the one uh, restaurant that they run, but there's no chain restaurant. Why not a sports bar? Why not a restaurant? And we're sitting there saying, great, this is stuff we've been thinking about for years. And they've been willing to work with us on it. Now, Monmouth, Fort Monmouth, that's another story. That's uh, because of the way it all went down. The state, uh, a couple of years ago, passed legislation, which Oceanport was vehemently against, and we, we voted against it. Um, passed anyway. Um, one one uh, assembly member supported us. That was Assemblyman Schroeder up north, who knew what, what could happen to a local government if a uh, state decides to do something. We have a seat at the table, but one vote out of nine kind of has us outvoted. And, if, you know, that's why we like working with Monmouth Park, is, the affordable housing and the different things that, are, that may wind up at Fort Monmouth, the, the shelters and things that do not necessarily bring in tax revenue. Monmouth Park, you know, they're willing to work with us. Their vision is clear to bring people into Monmouth Park. Our vision is clear with them to bring people into Monmouth Park. Fort Monmouth, you know, we'd like to see a college go there and other things, but there's a lot of moving parts with Fort Monmouth. That's you have three towns that's involved. That's way further out in the time. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly. That could be 20 years down the road. You know, it goes back and forth. At one point, Fort Monmouth was an immediate issue, and Monmouth Park was a back burner. We knew they were having issues, but that would come up. Then all of a sudden, Monmouth Park is the major issue because now they're on the verge of closing. So you have a small town with a couple of pretty major issues on our plate. So we're, um, we've been working with those, you know, simultaneously so we have a very active uh, a mayor and council our mayor sits on the fort monmouth committee our mayor meets with the monmouth park regularly also well so. thank you for uh, enlightening us on these issues thank, thank you. you for coming on to the show this is hometown solutions part of an ongoing series for the hall public forum i'm william richards thank you again